In the world of succession, Logan Roy was a larger-than-life captain of industry that clawed his way to the top with no remorse and reveled in keeping an iron grip on that power until the very end. He was a man who has, here and there, drawn in the edges of the world, now and then darkened the skies a little. His preternatural ability to always win, to always come out ahead no matter the odds, made him feel almost more like a myth than a man. But in fact, the seed of Logan Roy was born here in our world, in the real-life media mogul Rupert Murdoch. But what can Logan really tell us about Rupert and vice versa? And more importantly, how did Logan grow beyond this initial sprout of real-world connection and develop into one of the most iconic anti-heroes of the modern era? Here's our take. The man, the legend, Logan Roy. It's no secret that Rupert Murdoch and his family were big inspirations for Succession. Jesse Armstrong's initial script was a feature film called The Murdochs. Though Rupert claims that he's never watched it, he's clearly aware of the show, allegedly forbidding friends and family members from providing info for the show, even including a specific clause in his divorce with Jerry Hall, barring her from doing so. The similarities are obvious. Both are geriatric patriarchs of unfathomably large, family-run, right-wing media empires immigrants who seem to have succeeded at capturing the American dream and have spent their golden years stringing along a gaggle of children and hangers-on who hope to be named their heir. And while Logan never gave up control, it seems like Rupert might finally have. Kind of. We'll get back to that in a minute. But more interesting than the fun fact parallels of their lives is the larger idea that both represent. He's not a man, he's a f***ing planet. Each seems to exist almost as an embodiment of capitalism itself, the willingness to do whatever it takes and destroy anyone in your way in a bid to succeed, the placing of money above all else, the constant drive for more due to an underlying fear that your house of cards could come tumbling if you ever pause for even a moment, the fashioning of your entire life around this single-minded quest. Family, friends, anyone else be damned. You think there's a chance you'll just do a deal? Have you met my dad? Nope. He'll never retreat. But also the dark yet ever-present allure of unbridled power that almost makes it seem like all of the strife could be worth it in the end. Both Logan and Rupert exemplify the simultaneous hate of and lust for the seemingly endless power success can bring. They're dragged in the press and booed in the streets, but there are also always a stream of people waiting to cheer them on. Give them a made-up reward just to get them to show up. Go along with anything just for the chance to be in their vicinity. The will to be and to be seen and to do. That magnificent, awful force of him, but my God, I hope it's in me. Because if we can't match his vim, then God knows the future will be sluggish. Rupert, existing in real life, has built up a story around him over his near century on this earth, but everything we know is what we see in an outsider's perspective. We can guess at his motivations or deeper thoughts, but we can never truly know. Logan, on the other hand, was created explicitly to give us a peek behind the curtain, a more thorough exploration of the inner workings of the kind of man who would burn the world just to try to reignite a spark in the darkness in his own heart. He's a nothing man who may well be more personally responsible for the death of this planet than any other single human being. So let's take a deeper look at the two sides of Logan Roy. Logan didn't just become a part of the machine, but in fact, the machine itself. His single-minded quest for glory, money, and power led him to building an empire that not only crossed the globe, but controlled it. He had a vitality, a force that could hurt. I mean, look at it. The lives and the livings and the things that he made and the money. Over the course of the show, we see how Logan's ability to command control goes far beyond his own family. He uses his media empire to literally shape the world as people know it and has a direct line to the President of the United States. He laments several times that he didn't make the world, but the truth is that in many ways he did very much have a hand in shaping what the world has become, especially the worst parts of it. But no amount of collateral damage in the world at large or even in his own family is enough to give him pause as long as the machine continues lurching forward toward ever more domination. There's a line. Nothing is a line. Everything everywhere is always moving forever. 
Much of Logan's success comes from his ability to see the big picture and the granular details that will actually make or break the outcome. I feel it in my bones. End of the day, that's all I've got. He can assess what each person in a deal really wants, when something is bullshit in nice packaging, where things are actually heading. And his seemingly supernatural ability to always win really comes from following these instincts. His clear-eyed view of the world means that he does see realities that others don't, or rather deliberately ignore. Slaves, cotton, sugar. This country is nothing but an offshore laundry for turning evil into hard currency it just lies here you know living off its capital sucking in immigrants to turn it and stop it getting bed sores but this only serves to make his willingness to continue contributing to his darkness in such a major way all the more nefarious he's absolutely aware of all the suffering in the world and is able to rationalize a way adding to it because the only thing that matters to him is his own personal gain well i didn't make human nature but i do know what they read and what they watch I make my nut off what people really want. I go flat broke in a week if I didn't. Logan has built up a mythology around himself predicated on his belief that you make the reality you want to exist. You make your own reality. And once you've done it, apparently, everyone's of the opinion it was all so obvious. And taking his life as face value, it seems like he's right. He's created this idea of himself as a living legend, one who is never wrong, who always comes out on top, and who strikes fear into the heart of anyone that dares to cross his path. My hunch is that you're going to get because I've seen you get a lot, and I've never seen Logan get once. He only believes in himself and his instincts, and seems to always be able to pull off the win, and so everyone else believes in him too. His life story of starting from nothing and climbing to the top of the mountain and then building a ladder to go even higher perfectly exemplifies the dark side of the American dream. He proves that for a select few, it is possible to beat the odds, but he also shows how much you have to give up to get there. I don't like being outside the U.S. for too long. Doesn't sit well. And there's a mercilessness I miss. Everywhere else feels so soft. The corporate American dream is immensely ruthless and isolating, and so anyone that truly aspires to achieve it must close themselves off from the world and emotions themselves must leave their humanity behind and give themselves over fully to the system. Before we go on, we want to give a shout out to this video's sponsor, Factor, who made this analysis of Titan Logan Roy possible. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit that's delivered right to your door. Fuel up for breakfast, lunch, or dinner with these chef-prepared, dietitian approved meals. They're always fresh, never frozen, and are ready to enjoy in just two minutes or less. Adjust your stride this fall without missing a step and choose from Factor's ever-growing menu that has something for everyone. And unlike Logan, Factor makes sustainable choices by offsetting 100% of their delivery emissions and sourcing 100% renewable energy for their production sites and offices so you can feel good about what you're eating and how it gets to you. Support the take by checking out Factor once the video is over. Head to factormeals.com slash the take 50 and use the code the take 50 to get 50% off your first box. That's the take 50 at factormeals.com slash the take 50 to get 50% off your first box. While we spend much of the show watching Logan in action as the behemoth that cannot be toppled, we do occasionally get peeks into his backstory and how he became Logan Roy. If I'd spoken to my uncle like that, what, hmm? what would evil Uncle Noah do? Born in Dundee, Scotland in 1938, Logan started out life incredibly poor. When he was only four, while the world was gripped with war, his mother sent him, his brother Ewan, and his sister Rose to Canada to live with an aunt and uncle who were physically and mentally abusive. He was eventually sent to boarding school, but decided to return home. Soon after, his sister died, and his aunt and uncle blamed him for bringing polio home. Though it was never confirmed that he was the reason Rose contracted the disease, he lived with the guilt for the rest of his life. A backstory this rife with tragedy could have led to an empathetic, caring adult, as it did with Ewan. But Logan instead went in the other direction, turning away from the world and building up a bullish shell with which to plow through life. Rosebud is a dollar bill. It's whatever it took to get me the f out of here. Having to deal with the harshness of the world at such a young age is the reason that Logan is so much more aware of the realities of life than people like his children who have never really had to deal with the cruelty of the outside world. 
This is an opportunity, son. A bit of grit. Adversity. Like me. But it's also what drives him to continue the cycle of abuse, which they and everyone around him very much do feel the brunt of. Logan knows the power of love, and of the lack thereof, and uses that to keep his children trapped in his wake. I was born lucky. I'm a lucky person. And you're so f***ing jealous of what you've given your own kids. Even for all of the evil he does, even directly to them, there is still a part of them deep in their core that wants nothing more than his acknowledgement and love. He kept us outside, but he kept everyone outside. When he let you in, when the sun shone, it was warm. He in turn uses this desire to treat them like pawns in his game to achieve his own aims. But on some deep subconscious level, there might be a part of Logan that wants to hold on to the kids as a way to fill the void left by being orphaned as a child. He could have, after all, had his kids live with their mothers and only saw them occasionally for photo shoots and galas, but he kept them close in his orbit, right under his thumb. And so, in a very Logan way, he managed to be selfish on multiple levels, tying the kids to him to prove to himself that he's a better parent than his were, while simultaneously doing everything he can to make those kids' lives a beautiful, gilded hell. He was hard on women. He couldn't fit a whole woman in his head. A huge question hanging over the entire show is who Logan will end up naming as his true heir. Who finally gets to be the new winner? But the reality we see over and over again is that he's incapable of passing the torch. He claims that it's because his kids aren't ready for the job yet, which, fair enough. But the deeper truth is that he's afraid to give up any power because he doesn't know who he is without it. I, I, I don't know if you care about anything. And that scares me. He fears that giving up all of this control that he's worked so hard to wrestle from the rest of the world will mean backsliding into who he was before, a scared, weak child. He has no concept of himself as anything other than the most important man in the room, and in his mind, on Earth. Letting go and putting one of the kids or anyone else in charge would mean having to figure that out. When you've only known fighting your way upstream for 80 years, it can be hard to imagine yourself just treading water. Whenever Logan does set things in motion, to hand over the top spot, he always reneges at the last minute because deep down he can't let go. Dad, why? I win. Each of his kids go through the cycle of being told this is it, they're the one, only to have that dream shattered. Even when he sells to Matson, he makes sure to carve out ATN for himself, a place that he can still keep eyes on him and minds in the palm of his hand. This combination of man and machine makes Logan into a compelling anti-hero. He's terrible, but he's so good at being bad that he draws you in. You bust him here, guns in hand, and now you find they've turned to sausages. You talk about love. This happens to everyone in his orbit on the show, and to us as viewers in real life. And just like those in his life, as much as we try to truly get to know Logan, the distance with which he approached life and the walls he built around himself mean we'll never really get to understand him on the deepest level. And so he continues on in our minds just as he would have wanted, not as a man, but as a larger-than-life myth. Well, the future is real, but us, it's all made up. Logan Roy held on to the crown until the very end, though Armstrong has confirmed that he did underline Kendall's name, so maybe he was finally making plans to pass the torch to his not actually eldest son. If you were going to cross out, you wouldn't start underneath, would you? And recently, Rupert Murdoch, after years of waffling himself, finally named his eldest son, Lachlan, as his successor at News Corp. Lachlan and Kendall share many parallels themselves. Lachlan was the heir apparent until he quit suddenly, only to return to the fold a few years later. When Rupert sold 21st Century Fox to Disney, the entertainment division of News Corp, it seemed very much like Kendall getting pushed out in the Gojo deal. But, in fact, now Lachlan has been slated to become the next chair of News Corp. It remains to be seen if this will actually go through, or if Lachlan will find himself yet again following in Kendall's footsteps and getting the rug pulled out from under him. And even if he does manage to finally fully secure the throne, there are whispers that, just like Logan, Rupert has plans to keep running things from the shadows. Beyond all the money and power and influence, the most important lesson Logan Roy teaches us is the importance of holding on to compassion and connection. 
He built a grand empire, hoarded every resource he could get his hands on, had everyone in his life and, it seemed, the world under his thumb. And all he got was a life of paranoia, distrust, and loneliness, and to die separated from everyone who cares about him, with his annoying son-in-law holding a phone to his ear as he finally leaves this mortal coil. He was mean, and he made but a mean estimation of the world. And he fed a certain kind of meagerness in men. Perhaps he had to. There are many parts of the world that drive us towards ruthlessness, to cutting down others in a bid to build up ourselves, but Logan serves as a cautionary tale, showing us that all of the power in the world amounts to nothing in the end if it's built on a hollow life deprived of humanity. That's the take. Click here to watch a video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.